Hey audience, today I really want to show you how you can get started with Kubernetes on your computer. You should learn Kubernetes because it's a really easy tool that you can use for managing and deploying your applications really easily. It can normally be a little bit difficult to get started, but luckily for us, Docker has made it both easily on Mac and Windows to get a cluster up and running. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to go to Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, go to preferences, and then here on Docker for Mac, we can go here to Kubernetes and say enable Kubernetes. That's something like it as well on Windows. And when you do that and click apply as well, it will begin to pull a lot of Docker images to start. It will then say after some time when that is, it has pulled all the images, it will say Kubernetes is running. And now you're ready to go to the next step. We're going to use a tool called kubectl to control our Kubernetes cluster. And the first thing you're going to test if everything is running as expected. So now we hit the terminal and the first command you should run is kubectl version. This gives you an idea of both your client and server version is the same and are able to communicate. The next command you should run is kubectl cluster info and that gives you an idea of your Kubernetes master is running and responding. The first thing we are going to try is to run a simple nginx server. And the reason why is because it already exists on Docker Hub and we know it works. And that's very important when we're trying out new stuff. Do it incremental and then we know maybe what's going wrong. Here in the terminal, we need to write kubectl run dash dash image nginx and then give the name call, for example, web server. When we run that, that actually creates something called deployment. And we can see it by running kubectl get deploy. We can see that one deployment was made and it has a desire of one container, current only one, up to date and available. A deployment contained multiple things related to the app and as well as something called replication set. And you can see that by doing kubectl get replication set. You can see a replication set has been created and that has actually created one part as desired. And you can see the parts by curing the parts they're saying kubectl get part. You can see one nginx part has been created and it is running. Kubernetes is using this concept of resources. As you can see here, there is many resources and you will only be using a few of them. But you get the idea. Basically, you can always say kubectl and then get a resource. But here, for example, if you want to see more details about deployment, we can do kubectl describe deploy and then the name web server if you want to see more details about a deployment. This is what makes Kubernetes so powerful. Once you get the concept, it's easy to apply to everything. So how do we test this in our browser? By default, Kubernetes does not expose anything. And a quick way to test our container is using Kubernetes port forward. This sets up a proxy connection between your container and your computer. And this means it's a secure connection. For kubectl port forwarding, we need a part name. So we can say kubectl get part. Then we can copy the name and say kubectl port forward. Then the part name, then the port on our computer and then the port inside the nginx container which is port 80 then we can copy this go to our browser put in the url and we can see that it is nginx that is serving the page with that we know the container is running and correctly serving traffic in the next step we want to expose the container to the outside of the cluster that can be done by opening up a node port with a resource called service. To expose the port, we need to write kubectl expose deploy web server, give it a port, which is port 80, and then give it a type, which is node port. This creates a new service called web server, and we can see which random port we got assigned by saying kubectl get service we can see here a special type called node port was assigned and we can see we got the random port port 30,400 
58. So we can go to our browser and type in localhost because this is still running on Docker for Mac and this port. And we can see we now have visited the node port. The cool thing about Kubernetes is that it actually exposes the same port on all nodes in your cluster. And in this example, you only have one node. But if we, for example, had two nodes, a visit on this port would have redirected us internally in the cluster to the right container, no matter if we were visiting the other node where the container wasn't exposed on. That was pretty fun. Let's try creating our own application now. Here we have an example app. It's an express server based on Node.js. We have an accompanying Docker file. You can see we're from Node 10, add the files to the app folder, run npm install, and then lastly run Node server. The first thing we need is to run docker build-t, give it a name, Kubernetes node, and then the path for the Docker file. And while that completes, we can begin looking at how to create a deployment. So the first thing we need to do is then we're going to create a new file called deployment.yaml. Then we can go to Google and say Kubernetes deployment. Nobody can really remember how to, to write them by hand, but you can quickly easily find them here. Deployments, go find the first example and then copy and paste this. We only need to change a few things here. So for example, the first one here should be Kubernetes node, which is our uh, application name. Then we can change this and this and this and this to Kubernetes node. Then we can change this to be our Kubernetes node, which was our image name, and then change the container port to 9000. And, and lastly, we only really need one replica for a start. Now this is basically ready to be run on Kubernetes, except there's one small detail which is quite important. If you were trying to run this now, it would fail because it would not be able to find the Kubernetes node Docker image, even though we just built it. And one important detail is that, if we look at the documentation, there's this image pull policy. And the image pull policy, one of always, never, if not person, Default to always if latest tag is specified or if not present otherwise. So that means because our Docker image is using the latest tag, we need to specify here on the container saying image pull policy and then we can say if not present. Now this will work on our Kubernetes cluster. And the reason why is because Kubernetes will try to go out and find this on Docker Hub and that does not exist and therefore it will begin to fail and will not be able to deploy it even though it already has the docker image. Now that we have added it to a file the config we can simply use the command apply to create the resources. So we say kubectl apply dash f for file and then deployment and we can see the kubernetes node deployment was created and we can actually do as before we can say kubectl expose deploy kubernetes node deployment then remember to say type type equals to node port and we're actually able to visit this in the browser again and one thing actually that is pretty cool if you wanted to save the configuration of a service you can actually get all the yaml files that kubernetes is storing by saying kubectl get service then taking the name and then saying O for output, then equals and then YAML. And you're actually able to see this is the configuration that Kubernetes is using for defining uh, service. And if you want it, you can just take this, save it, and then, for example, remove the metadata and some of the things that are hard coded, for example, the cluster IP. And this will actually be something you could use in the project and commit. And here quickly, we can see kubectl get the service and then see we go to this port and we can go to our browser and see it. 
And for the absolute last thing, we can see how we can update the Docker image and redeploy it to Kubernetes. First thing we need is to actually make a change. So let's call hello Kubernetes version two, save it, go to our terminal, say Docker build. Then this time we can say T Kubernetes node V2 and then build it. Then we can go into our deployment, change the image name to version two, version two, save it, go to our terminal, say kubectl apply, again, file, deployment, and the deployment has been updated. Then we can go to our browser and refresh and see that it's updated. So in this video, we did a lot of things. So to sum it up what we did, I have a list right here. Firstly, we started with how to get Kubernetes running. Then the next thing, how to use the command line tool called kubectl. Then we created a deployment with the kubectl. Then we port forwarded to a container and saw it in our browser. Then we exposed the deployment to a node port. Then we built and ran our own Docker image and described it in a deployment.yaml file. And lastly, we updated and redeployed and saw the updated build in our browser. This is a really interesting topic. So in the next video, I'm going to try to do it in the cloud. Also left a blog post in the description where you can find all the details on how to do this on your own. So basically, thank you for watching and see you next time.